is a 1944 Martin uh, D28, so the last year of the scallop braced herring bones. It has the um, Adirondack spruce top, typical ebony fingerboard and bridge. Um, they started the heavier braces without the scallops in 45. This was in the fall of 44. This one was made. Most of the time uh, in the war years, they had a restriction on the use of metal, so the tuners were very thin, didn't hold up nearly as well. They had no bushings even in the headstock for the tuners, and most of the necks had an ebony rod as the reinforcing rod rather than the traditional steel T-bar that they had used since the mid to early 30s. This particular one has a steel T-bar in it that seems to have been original, had the neck set in it, and it seems to have been um, a bit of an anomaly. We don't know why that was, but I, I happen to like the T-bar necks better, um, so it worked out good for me. This one had been sitting in Texas in a guy's closet for many, many years. He had a brand new shiny D35 Martin that he loved a lot, and every time he had friends come over for a jam, they would want to get in the closet and see this old beat-up Martin and see what it was about. So he finally decided he'd take it into a shop and try and find out um, what the deal was on it. And I ended up getting it from that shop um, many years ago. It was a bit of a mess. The neck was needed a reset. The bridge was broken, and we had to do some repair things to it. But when we got it done, um, it sounded pretty great. You guys filmed Brian Sutton. He had a 43, which is very similar to this one. Um, there's a few around that collectors have that have bring, uh, if you go to Wayne Henderson's festival, there's a guy that brings his 44 every year that gets passed around as one of the best herring bones around from that particular year. So there's not that many, there's a few hundred made each year. So, and not all of them survived, of course. So one never knows how many are left. Um, 44 was a particularly good year, I think a lot of people have said, for the spruce that was on the tops and the sound. There's a lot of really good sounding 44s, and I like this one a lot, I think mainly because of the T-bar as well, which is atypical for that year, but it's a pretty good sounding guitar. <laughs> Bass, uh, very strong bass, which is kind of typical of the D28s as well. So it's a good one. Mm -hmm. 